This is a 2023. It's the uh, the newer body style Ram 1500 Crew Cab Sport. Uh, this one's got the six and a half foot box on it, uh, rather than the five and a half foot box. So if you got a four wheeler, or if you're carrying a little bit more cargo and stuff like that, then this is uh, one you're going to want to be probably the box size you're going to be looking for. A couple things. Uh, being a sport, it's got a couple. Uh, comes with a cloth bucket seats. They're heated. It also has the uh, nav on the and the 12 inch touchscreen, and for 2023 20, uh, they also redid the dash on these as well. So you get the digital dash on the um, uh, with the navigation. We're going to take a look at that when we get inside. Uh, it comes with power pedals, backup cameras, uh, Android Auto, Google, um, Apple CarPlay, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we did add some uh, functional items as well. This has got the 392 anti spinner axle in it, so that's about. Uh, all told, it's about an $800 upgrade to get those gears and that and the anti-spin. Uh, a little better for pulling. Uh, it's also a little bit better if you're doing some off-road driving, that sort of stuff. Then we added the bigger tank, uh, the 125-liter tank, and then the hitch and the brake controller. So it's functionally set up to pull a trailer. It also has the e-torque, which gets you the maximum tow capacity. So uh, if you're looking for pulling a trailer, this would be a good one for you for that sort of stuff. Like it's it's designed to be a like to to work. So I just got my clipboard down. A couple things we want to talk about. On the Sport, of course, we've got the e-torque. So what that e-torque means is that um, underneath the back seat, there's a big battery pack, and there's a belt that it spins up and spins the cam and the engine when you're taking off. I believe on the Hemi, it gives you about another 115 foot-pounds of torque. I'd have to look that up just to double-check that. Uh, <clears throat> but that's out of the hole, so it gives you a little bit more pulling power if you're pulling a trailer. Across the front with the Sport, you get the color-keyed grill. So this all matches the paint, in case everything's painted to match. Same with the bumper down below. Uh, <clears throat> and it looks really good. Everything's all nicely tied together. Built-in fog lights. These are LEDs, so they're nice and bright. A um, couple cool things, like when you're turning a corner, when you're going really slow, it'll actually turn the fog light on. Like, say you were turning towards me right now, this fog light would turn on when you're driving at night. So it kind of lights the ditches up and stuff a little bit when you're driving. Just makes it a little bit neater, uh, a little bit easier to drive. 20-inch tires and wheels. Uh, they get the all-black rims with the Sport. Bridgestone Dooler tires. So good quality tire. It's a nice all-around, good on the highway, good on the off-road, that kind of thing. So if you're going to be doing, uh, you know, you shouldn't have to replace these unless you're doing, you know, a dedicated mud or a dedicated off-road. You may want to go something a little bit, uh, you know, with more plies or something like that if you're if you're doing heavy-duty stuff like that. And, of course, I do recommend that you always buy winter tires come wintertime because winter tires are just a lot better. Uh, we already talked about the badging, but you'll notice everything's done in a black. Everything's, uh, like all your RAM logos and everything like that, everything's done in that satin black finish. On the inside, you've got a cloth insert on the bucket seats with the vinyl on the outside. These seats are heated, okay, so they're, uh, and I'll show you how to use those here in a minute. When we get to the to the center dash, we start looking at that. Lots of storage areas, uh, uh, map pockets down there, little glove box in here, flips up, got some storage in there. And then down here is your, you know, your owner's manuals and your main glove box. Uh, molded floor mats to fit. You'll see they're cut out to, into the wheel well, so they fit perfectly. And they got little clips to kind of hold them in place, okay, so you can kind of snap them in there if you, you don't want them running around. This is, or, uh, this is a manual seat. There's a lever here that you lift up to slide it back and forth. Uh, the uh, driver's side's power operated, so it goes powers up and down and forward and back. So it's a little bit fancier for the driver. On the passenger side door, uh, we've got vinyl up top, carbon fiber, a little metal, vinyl inserts, so nice trim design, power windows and locks, more storage areas, more storage areas, so lots of places to put your odds and ends. In the back seat, there's a ton of room back here, uh, being a crew cab. So if you got kids or, you know, especially if they're taller kids and teenagers and stuff like that, this uh, back seat's quite nice to have that extra room. Got a fold-down armrest with a couple of cup holders in it. You can flip this up out of the way. Now you got a seat belt, uh, room for three. Uh, in the back, there's a little storage area here. Kids got their own AC vents, so they can kind of move those around where they like the cold air to blow. It's also got some cup holders back here. A little bit wider. Uh, the idea is you can pop an iPad in there, and kids can watch movies or DVDs, that sort of stuff. These seats flip up. The other side flips up as well. You can kind of flick it out of the way. It's got a nice flat load floor, so if you want to slide your cargo in and out, it's nice and easy. A ton of room. Like, you can probably throw a foamy down there and sleep if you had to. If you're going, like, on a long road trip and you want to save yourself a hotel. Um, although, I don't know how many days I'd want to do that. I mean, I guess if I was fishing or a couple days down in Bella Cooler or something, it'd be kind of fun. 
Used to do that in my youth. Uh, anyway, on the side doors and the back, same thing. On its trim level, carbon fiber, everything's all kind of laid out nice and neat and tidy uh, for the doors for storage. So on the back, um, we, I talked earlier about the six and a half foot box. The main way to tell is the distance in this area right in here. So you end up picking up about another foot, and you can kind of see in the front if you're looking at a five and a half foot box, that wheel that wheel tub is going to be closer to the to the uh, to the bulkhead here. So th that's where your extra space comes in. You also see it's got those little grooves there. Those are for like a divider. You can see those little grooves I'm kind of pointing at. There's two there. There's also two at the back. And what you can do is you can cut a two by four to fit in there, or two by eight, or two by ten, or whatever you want, and it'll just slot in the, into both sides, and it'll kind of get, act like a divider. So, like, for instance, in this particular one, you drop it in there, and then if you want to put your propane tank at the front of the cab and stop it from kind of rolling all over the place when you're out getting uh, gas or, or filling it up or whatever. Same with jerry cans, that sort of stuff. Super handy for that. A couple of mud flaps, we put those on when we did the PDI. That's included on the price that you see online. So we do a, we do that installed. So it's not part of the manufacturer's sticker. It's something we do here when we uh, when we get them ready for sale. On the back, you got the dual exhaust coming out the back uh, tailpipes. So that's part of that uh, that sport package. So that's what those are all about. Uh, rear hitch with your receiver bar to slide in. We've also got uh, power point for your four pin. Down below is your seven for plugging in your trailers and stuff like that. So you're you're all ready to go for that. And we mentioned earlier about having the electric brake controller. More of that black finish, uh, satin finish on the emblems. Little backup camera in here. In the box, it's got the easy drop tailgate, so it just kind of lowers itself down without slamming. And once again, you can see more of those hooks and more of those little divider slots there that you can pop a board in there if you want to add an extra divider. Okay, down the side, um, got a couple of wheel tubs in here I want to point out. Let's take a look inside the wheels. They come with uh, these plastic wheel tubs built right into them. And what they're going to do is they're going to stop the rocks from kind of beating up the inside of your um, inside of your um, metal on um, on the box sides. So they'll just stand up a lot better. You're not going to have as much, uh, you know, uh, rock chips. If you look at an older trucks, sometimes you'll see like blisters on the paint. They look like about dollars and loony size toonies and stuff like that where the paint's blown up. Usually that's what causes it is rocks pinging up from underneath there. Okay, in the back seat, uh, this seat flips up too. Like we kind of showed you on the other side how it flips up for the flat low floor. A couple more things. Uh, these headrests fold down by pressing that button. The other one does it too, of course. The idea being is just gives you a lot better visibility. So if you want to pull those pull those headrests down, then you can see out the back window a lot easier because this isn't blocking your view. And then when the kids hop in the back, you can kind of pop it back up again. Uh, power sliding rear window that opens and closes. It's got the built-in rear defrost, okay, so it keeps it from fogging up. And that's power operated just from the overhead console. It's kind of nice to be able to open that back window up. It gives you a little breeze over your shoulder. Like I like to crack my window here on the driver's side down a little bit, and then I open that back slider, and it'll get kind of a nice breeze over your shoulder. I'm not a big air conditioning guy. I don't know if every time I turn my AC on, I seem to get a cold from it for some reason. But anyway, that's what I like to do with that rear slider. Unless you're driving down a dusty road. Then it sucks all the dust in. That's not good. Power windows, power locks, power mirrors. The mirrors are folding. We can press that button there. And you can see the mirrors fold in. So if you've got a tight parking spot, like a, you know, say you've got a condo or something in Edmonton or whatever, and, you you know, it's a little bit more tricky to park, you can kind of fold those in. Or if you're going to West Edmonton Mall, you can kind of flick them in, too, and less chance of your mirrors getting damaged. We talked earlier about the power seats. So this is your uh, power recline, forward and back, and you can also raise and lower the seat by pressing that button. And then you've got a lower back support here, too, for the driver. So there's a little airbag in there. It just kind of pushes out to give you a little bit more back support. On the steering, uh, a couple of buttons. We've got electric brakes now. You just pull that lever there. That's how you set your e-brake. And then to take it off, you put your foot on the real brake and then just push it ahead. So there's no lever to push on. You're not going to have any cables or anything like that. Power pedals to go in and out. So if you're a bit shorter, you can push the uh, pedals towards you and get a little further away from the airbag. And if you're tall like I am, you push the pedals as far away as you can get them. And then you can kind of slide the steering wheel towards you and make yourself get comfortable. Basically, you can you can move everything around to get uh, a position where you're comfortable with on a long trip. doesn't really matter how you're built. Fog light's built right in. This little light here, if we press that, it's going to turn the uh, cargo light on in the box so we can see what we're doing. In automatic, uh, what it's going to do is your headlights are going to automatically turn on as soon as it's dark enough out. There's a little sensor right there, that little bump there. Once it uh, picks up a uh, shortage of light, it'll flick the lights on for you automatically. So if you covered that up, it'll turn your headlights on totally. 
This is your dash brightness for your Speedo. That's this gauges in here. Um, this stereo here runs on a different <coughs> a light factor. Uh, there's a, or a light switch, and it's in the settings. It's, uh, it's a little bit buried in there, but you can find it. So this gauge, it'll get dark at night automatically, but you got to set it up separately. Okay, a couple things uh, new for 2023. You've got this touchpad here. This is kind of the same, but we do have this new cascade button. So on your dash, you can hit the cascade button, boom, and then it changes your gauges. So now you've got a compass, fuel economy, there's your trailer brake controller, the stereo, and your vehicle information screen. Uh, this kind of gives you a different layout. Because this is all digital, instead of being analog, you can change it too. Like you've got your main gauge with your speedo and your tack. We can also toggle it over if you just want your digital gauge. That's easy to do. Uh, you can switch between uh, kilometers and miles per hour just by hitting the OK button. So now you see all your gauges switched over to miles per hour, and the speedo switched over to miles per hour. Next gauge we got, we got uh, fuel economy screen. This is uh, anything to do with your vehicle. So you got your fuel economy, tire pressure, all your coolant temperatures. You know, you get all your gauges. There's anything to do with your oil, tires, start, stop, total drive time. Uh, and then back to your fuel economy screen. So lots of different information that you can access through there. A couple of different tripometers. There's two of those. You can reset one, and then you still have your other one. So if you're trying to keep track of two different things at the same time, you can do that. This is kind of cool for 2023. Got a built-in nav, touched right in the, or built right into your screen and your dash. So you got actually two nav screens. You've got your main one in the middle plus this one. Um, so, you know, hopefully you don't get lost. Uh, distance, uh, this keeps track of your trailer tow kilometers. So once you've got your trailer plugged in, it'll actually run this tripometer and just keep track of how many kilometers you've been pulling your trailer. And then this is your trailer brake controller. Uh, not your brake controller per se, but just a gauge showing you how much gain you're sending out to your trailer, what your gain set out, and how much juice you're sending to the trailer. What's playing on the radio uh, gives you the name of the artist, the song, the radio station. I know it works really well on Sirius XM. I have had some FM channels where it works and some that don't, so I'm not sure how that uh, all that all operates. But I do know that when I'm listening to Sirius XM or my Apple CarPlay, it displays the artist and stuff on there. Stored messages, uh, check engine lights, low tire pressure lights, your key fob battery's dead. All those kind of things will get stored in this little message screen, and then it'll remind you when you fire it up to, to get in there and play with it. Screen setup. We can go in here and change your screen. So you can see here upper, so we're upper uh, middle, so we're, you can see how it's highlighted in blue there now. Now we're going to go in there, and we can change it. We can change it from a badge. We can change it to the compass, the temperature, the time. Let's do the time there. So now you, you can program all that. But you can also change this screen, this screen, this screen. Basically, the whole the whole place is kind of customizable. So you can kind of lay the, the, the dash out the way you want. So I recommend everybody kind of get in there and play with it a little bit, figure out what it is that you like in your dash and how you want it laid out, and then it'll you can program it so it's set up the way, you know, gives you information that you want rather than just whatever the factory gave you. Cruise control is over here. Set coast and resume. And you also can set these gear limiter switches. You can shift up and down using your these plus minus button. Basically, it's an eight-speed automatic. So as soon as you put it in drive, it's just automatic. And then you can use this to shift down if you want to, if you want to use the engine to hold you back a little bit. Two high, four high, four auto, four low. Basically, pretty straightforward stuff there. Four by four autos, which you're going to want to use on when you're driving on pavement when the roads are icy. It hooks up your front end, but it doesn't engage everything, so it's just easier on the system, and it'll only engage the four-wheel drive what it needs to. So you're not going to create all that binding in your driveline and then, uh, you know, basically wreck your tires. And, you know, it's just harder on your driveline if you don't use it, if you, if you use that on, if you're not using that on pavement. If you use four high on pavement, it's harder on the driveline, but you want to use four high when you're driving off-road because now everything's locked together. And the 4x4 isn't kind of engaging, disengaging, engaging, disengaging. So this is what you want to use on pavement. This one you want to use on gravel. And then, of course, you got your 4 low if you really need, like, a ton of torque for some reason. Auto start, stop. You can press that button. What that's going to do for you is when you're sitting at a, uh, at a stoplight and you're idling with your foot on the brake or in a traffic jam or something, it's going to shut the vehicle off and then restart it when you go to take off again. So it spins that belt up that we talked about with that battery pack behind the rear seat. So it doesn't actually engage the starter. It spins that belt. So it's, you're not going to wear out your ring gear and that kind of stuff. Um, the idea is you get better fuel economy with it. 
I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make in High Prairie because, I mean, we don't have traffic jams up here. But, you know, if you're living in Edmonton or something, probably, you know, or driving through bigger city centers or stuff like that, it could probably save you a bit of money, especially on the hand day. That thing's always jammed up, it seems like. All right. Uh, main center screen, we've got a bunch of buttons here for controlling your heat for the driver's side and your fan speed. Over here, you got the temperature controls for the passenger. Uh, you can turn your uh, heated mirrors on, your rear defrost on, where you'd like the air to blow. Okay, so it's just a manual button for running your AC units. You can also go in here and through the comforts button that I just pressed here and change all your temperature controls in this screen here as well. Sometimes you can set a screen up. We can add a, we're going to add a widget here. You can customize the screen. You can put a stereo down here, and let's say I want to put my heater controls up top. So now you've got your layout with your digital heater controls here and your, uh, or your radio station down below. These are totally, once again, customizable. You can add as many pages. I think I shouldn't say you can add as many pages as you want. I think there is a limit. Uh, but it does give you access to kind of control everything and, and lay it out the way you want it to. There's different patterns. Like you can add a page. You can pick your layouts. You can pick all your data, whatever you want to put in there. Media. So this is what we're listening to as far as uh, radio stations. Let's put it on a good one here. Let's get to channel 56. There we go, the highway. So now we can listen to country. Um, so this here is your AM, FM. you got Sirius XM in here. Um, uh, Apple CarPlay would throw through here if you wanted to. Well, I shouldn't say that. Apple CarPlay actually goes through the phone button. Uh, but you can also do your input. Like if you do have your phone paired up, it can play that. Or say you've got an iPod hooked up, say you still got one of those kicking around somewhere. You could play your music through that way. Uh, sources, you can also use Alexa if you want to do that too. So anything that's black you can use. Anything that's kind of gray isn't hooked up yet. So you haven't got anything plugged into your auxiliary cables, that sort of stuff. Audio settings, you can change your uh, bass, your treble. Uh, you can also change the volume of each individual item. So how loud do you want your nav instructions to be relative to your phone call instructions? So let's say every time you get a phone, your phone rings, it's too loud, you can turn down the volume, right, just like that. So now my volume on my cell is only going to be 13 when I'm talking on the call, on a phone. There's your bass, treble, balance, control. You can turn your surround sound off and on if you like, whatever you prefer. So t tons of different settings in there that you can play with. Comfort we already looked at. Now, this is just a big version of the, the – there's two nav. Well, there's the nav and the dash, plus there's this nav. And then we've got the nav on this, the smaller version here. I like this screen when I'm driving in the city because it's a lot bigger and I can see a lot further ahead. You can kind of scroll in and out, and zoom, and that sort of stuff. So you can kind of see where you're, if you had a route planned, it would tell you where to turn. You can see a long ways in advance of where you're going to need to be. And, you know, if, you know when you're driving, particularly me when I get lost, it's nice to know, okay, three streets from now i got to turn to the right, that kind of thing. Phone. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, you can pair your phone up and then have the truck run your cell phone for you to answer, you know, read your text messages, do all that kind of stuff. Although what I do recommend is just download the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto app on your new phone if you've got a newer cell phone, and then just use Apple CarPlay. Uh, the interface is a lot better. Uh, it'll take your Apple Maps, your Google Maps. It'll throw them up on the screen. Um, it pairs nicer. The interface is a little bit easier to use because it just looks like your cell phone. It looks like a bigger touch screen of, of, of your cell phone itself. And just everything works together a lot nicer, and I find that it's a lot easier to use. Uh, vehicle itself, this is all your settings. So this is where you program your truck. Uh, you can decide, for instance, safety driving. Do you want the automatic emergency braking off and on? How, how sensitive do you want it to be? You know, we can set it to be far away. Uh, we can set up your hill start assist if you want it off or on. You can play with your time. You can set your time format to 12 or 24 hours. Once again, tons and tons and tons of settings. You can probably play with this touch screen and set your truck up for probably an hour or two. So it just gives you a ton of ways to, to customize it the way you like it. I recommend that if you're spending this kind of money on a truck like this, spend a couple hours playing with this, the, all these buttons, figure out what they do. You know, maybe read the manual a little bit, talk, and then, or if you got any questions, give us a call. I can kind of walk you through it. But um, there is, if there's something that annoys you about your truck, chances are pretty good you can either turn it off, disable it, or reactivate it, or change the settings. Um, and it's amazing what these vehicles will do with now with all the electronics. Okay, down here we got the trailer brake controller. So this is your uh, for your running your brakes uh, for your when you're 
setting up your trailer brakes and this is adjusting your gain. The nice thing about having the factory brake controller rather than the aftermarket jobber ones is this will tie in with all your safety systems and all your features within your truck. They just work a lot better. Traction control, you can turn that off and on. So if you want to spin your tires for some reason, say you're stuck in the mud and you want to try to rock yourself out, you're going to want to disable your traction control. Otherwise, the truck's going to get involved and it's going to try to stop your wheels from spinning. Same with tow haul mode. If you're pulling a trailer, you can kind of activate that and just changes how the vehicle shifts, just makes it a little bit easier to, uh, you know, just shifts down quicker, you know, uh, it won't shift up as fast, just makes it pulling the trailer a lot nicer. A little edge here for your cell phone, those are those USB ports we looked at earlier for plugging your phone in to have it access the stereo. Place for your cell phone, you kind of just jam it in there and it holds it in place. It's got a little spot here in the bottom so your cord, you can plug it in and charge it while you're driving. Nice big deep storage bin. These trays are removable. This little liner comes out so you can take it out and clean it. You spill goop all over the place. A cup holder slides ahead. Place here for your coffee, coin holder, right? You can spin that around, put it back in the other way if you like. So it gives you a little tray to store your items. Nice big armrest. Um, opens this up. Another tray, another USB port. Another place to pop your cord out the side so you can plug your cord into here if you want and then have it charged that way if you like. And then down below, even more storage. This flips up. There's a little divider down there that I just kind of flicked over. Just keeps your junk from sliding from the front half of the console to the back. So if you get it all neat and organized, you can kind of lay everything out. Same thing with this one. It's got a little rubber liner in the bottom that you can take out and clean. On the overhead, a couple more buttons we got to go over. This is your open and close and your power sliding rear window. Place here for your sunglasses. You can kind of tuck them up out of the way, keep everything nice and neat. Uh, a couple more buttons we've got is the SOS button and the Sirius XM Guardian buttons. SOS, if we hit that, it's going to call the RCMP and send them here. Uh, give them an alert. So if you're ever in an accident or in a situation where you need the RCMP, you can hit that and they should show up. This assist button is your Sirius XM Guardian. Basically what that allows you to do is there's an app that you can download and put on your cell phone. You can use your cell phone to start your truck. Lock your doors, unlock your doors. Uh, it's, it's a subscription based. I think it's like 25 bucks a month. Well, it's kind of handy. Um, I recommend everybody download and try it. See if they like it. See if they use it. Uh, once again, my wife has it on her truck and she really likes it. I've had it on my demos and I've never used it. So um, I didn't see the value there, but some people do. So everybody's different. Um, but I do recommend that you kind of download it. At least take the, the free trial version and see what you think. Okay, uh, if you're looking to get yourself into a new half ton, you know, this is our best-selling trim model in the sport. Uh, and this is a particular one with a six-and-a-half-foot box. It would be really handy if you've got a bigger trailer, carrying more loads, say you got a four-wheeler and stuff like that. It allows you to have more room to store stuff in the box and carry your cargo as well. So give us a shot. Let's get together, have a cup of coffee, come on down, take it for a drive, and uh, 